Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be discussing an intricate cable build that I've done now for quite some time. I'm getting more and more requests for this cable. It's a VFD interface cable. What it's designed to do is allow you to cycle your spindle on and off through a relay and actually manipulate speed to the actual spindle by, again, manipulating the VFD settings through uh, the G540 all through one cable. And of course, I'm using a GX16 six pin connector. I hope you guys can see that. You can see all the six terminals. Now, this is probably one of the most advanced terminals, uh, or I should say uh, actual ends to terminate due to the fact of the tolerances we're dealing with. Um, I've gotten asked, how do I recommend doing this particular connector? Now, I always start in the center, and that's pin six, and I'll do my shield drain. But in order to get the proper length shield drain, and in order to get the, the actual tolerance that I stay with here, uh, staying at about a half inch, what I do is I remove PVC casing uh, farther back than I require. This gives me terminals that are much longer. Then what I do is I cut the actual terminals to the required length and leave the shield drain the exact length it was prior to me cutting the terminals, and therefore I'm always left with excess length on my shield drain, okay? Now, that's the secret to getting the shield drain to the proper length and you not fighting it. A lot of guys do that, and you can use that method once again when you're building your own cables, regardless of what connectors you're using. Um, again, dealing with tight tolerances just comes with practice. Uh, you can see here all of these are done perfectly with solder and flux. That's a must. And again, coming across here and keeping your casing nice and sound, that is imperative. I see a lot of videos where your casing is basically butchered. You want to keep this as nice and clean as possible. And of course, when you're done, the finishing touch, you can see I've got my piece of double wall shrink. I did not close her up for this reason. So you can see how the double wall heat shrink, now this has adhesive in it. Once it shrinks, it'll release its adhesive. And when that adhesive, once again, protects these connectors and terminals from moisture. So again, it seals it up, it insulates it, and then we just install our actual end connector, which is the metal connector that will go and seal the plug up. Now, on the other end, you can see we've got our ferrules. Now these are soldered on and then they're crimped. Okay, I get questions on that. How do I do that? I overcut the actual terminals, and then after I overcut the terminal, you'll see there's a slight extension sticking out. I then use some uh, flux, carefully solder it. You do not want to melt your ferrule, and then we go in and crimp. This way we have the best of both worlds, but primarily we have a weld. There we, therefore, we never can have uh, a problem with a crimp connection. I've seen many crimp connections go bad. If you do it enough over time, you can get virtual perfection. And the big thing here on the end of the cable, and I see this never done properly, for some reason a lot of guys avoid doing it, use double wall heat shrink and it turns the end of the cable into more or less a plastic. And by doing that, you get much more durability and you don't have to worry about your cable fraying, it stays nice and neat, and again, it's a professional finish. Now again, we have five, ter or, uh, we have five terminals here, two of which will be allocated for the relay three of which will be allocated to the G540 to manipulate the spindle speed. Okay, and that's through its PWM signal. So this cable was made custom for a client, and again, I hope you guys are using this knowledge to benefit from. I get a lot of critics out there, you know, these videos are being shot in 4K. I'm certainly not a professional photographer, but considering the fact that I'm not an entertainment channel, I really don't care your opinion on, you know, shooting in that effect. This is something that if you're building your own system, I hope you guys use this information because it's pretty much priceless and it will certainly work with any system. And again, using a single cable eliminates a lot of real estate of you actually having to use multiple panel mount connectors in your enclosure in order to incorporate two different features, which is typical of what you see on most systems. This single cable will now control not only the cycling, but of course, uh, manipulating RPM of the actual spindle. So again, we've killed two birds with one stone, and of course, this cable is double shielded. Okay, that's a must. Um, again, any accessory you're using, if you can afford it, if your budget is appropriate, especially for CNC robotics, do yourself a favor and stick with the double shielded. You'll have bulletproof signals as long as it's properly grounded and you're golden. Now, the other question I get is, where is this cable going to be grounded? Well, when he plugs this cable into his enclosure, 
The back end of the master, uh, master, my master edition enclosure will have a ground bus. When it's completed, I'll do a video on that. And when this is plugged in, it grounds out right to the enclosure and everybody's happy. So again, guys, I hope that this video has been helpful. Um, another thing is I always lay my tools out and I get told I look like a surgeon, but there's a reason I do this because the more organized I am, this is the kind of work you get. And this is what I found over the years. Now, whether or not it works for you, I don't know. But for some reason, the more disorganized I am, things get crazy and I, I really find that I'm chasing my tail, so to speak. So the more organized I stay, this is the kind of work I can produce and that's what I expect you would expect. So that's what I do. So again, guys, if you want to contact me for any questions or quotes, I know that looking at something like this, I'm sure you're going to have questions. You message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Many of you are doing that. I mean, like I said, the channel is growing ridiculously fast. I really do appreciate all that, that support. I love that. Um, if you guys uh, do want to message me through my e dealer direct store through eBay, I uh, will have these links on the description. It'll also be in the video description below, and you'll be all set. Thank you again for your time. Take care.